Is that it there? Uh, well, good morning for uh, everybody here and those watching on the internet or on YouTube. Today I want to I want to share a brand new message. Like I said earlier, I have many messages God is birthing in me, but this one, uh, you know, when did it happen? Well, maybe two weeks ago. And this message is called the Kingdom of Shiners. Now you might just wonder what is he uh, talking about? Well, you you will learn what I'm talking about as I go forward. I just would love to uh, pray before. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you just help me deliver this message. It, uh, I love messages that always comes from your heart to ours. And uh, Lord, I pray that I will deliver it according to your plan and your will. And may you minister by the power of the Holy Spirit upon the hearts of people will, will, willing to listen as I uh, share this message upon my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Well, this message started with this verse. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 43. And then we'll probably put it on uh, on the board there. It says, the righteous, then the righteous, Jesus speaking, then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. If there's anyone thing that pleases God the Father more than anything else is the fact that his children have learned to shine like his son. I don't know, but you, I don't know if you know uh, this uh, completely out of your heart, but God's heart, the Father, Father God's heart is that uh, the whole purpose of being a believer is all about a new nation. It's all about a new type of breed of people on planet Earth. It's about Adam and Eve and the design that God had for human beings, right? So that's why when we get born again, then we're born anew. Everything starts anew. And in that experience of being born again, there's always like you start a brand spanking new life. And of course, there's the growing stage. But the, the intention of God the Father is all about having a family that love each other. And out of that, they love the people around them and they shine his light around them. And this message, this is what this message is all about. And my question for you today, is that your desire? Is there anybody here, anybody listening, is that your greatest desire? I don't know... Uh, uh, you're, you're probably uh, <laughs> you're probably wondering uh, where was I? Like I get disturbed so easy there. <laughs> so <laughs> well, it's hard to preach when somebody's. So uh, God's desire is is that we have a he, he wants to have a people that are completely submitted to Him. Right? When we see that we receive Jesus as Lord, what does that mean? That means that he becomes truly Lord of your life. That means that he, he owns you. That means you live for him. That means you learn to walk in the spirit. And that means that you learn to control your emotions. That, that means that you learn to just walk with him, in love with him. And that's his desire for us. His desire is that we represent him and that's the key uh, of this message that's the the, the the ultimate goal of that message to challenge those listening and you guys here to live for him completely lost in him completely possessed by him completely uh, ready to do anything for him and that's his desire is that your desire my question for you is that your desire, because I know one thing, that's my desire. I don't know, I, uh, we all do a lot of mistakes, even in our walk with God, even though we're born again. I don't know if you're like me, I want to be like David. I want God to shine his light upon my heart and make me see what's not still good in there. Because I want to please him. When I mean him, I want to, I want to have done everything possible to touch a human life for him. And, uh, and uh, not just behind a pulpit, with my life. As a, as a father, as a minister, as a, 
uh, as a brother in Christ, as you know, as a human being. And that that is the desire of God the Father is that he we because all over the world there's many that call themselves Christians, but unfortunately they're dirtying his image. And I believe that that's why he birthed that message in me to to give a challenge out there to people to listen. You're not your own. Get with it. You know, there's many profess uh, uh, you know Christians that they do things that they think things and. They operate in, they, in ways that, you know, they don't, they, they mess the kingdom of God. And we are supposed to die to self and live for him. And so I want to share, uh, I don't know, I'm, this might be a two-part message, but I believe that the only way to do that is learning to die to ourselves and to abide in Jesus by falling in love with him. The only true, genuine way, even though we're born again, that's just to start. The real thing is just to spend time with him. If you are a desire, as I have that desire in me, and hopefully you have that same desire, I'm going to share a scripture, some scriptures with you that really in a nutshell, that's what Jesus was saying. And Jesus was saying in, uh, uh, in John 15, 1, and this is the key to totally serve him, to be committed to him. How does that Happen well. It comes by what Jesus says in verse one, chap John chapter fifteen. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Now Jesus is speaking. He's speaking about our hearts. He's he's talking about the key way of being representative of Him on earth. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, He prunes. It's so that it bears more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, or stay joined in me would be a proper way of saying it, or keep the communication line going. And I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bear much fruits. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And those fruits really, in a nutshell, are the fruits of the Spirit, which is the character of God. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about if you want to display my character, you want to live for me, that you want to shine your light, you want to be the salt of the earth, you have to learn to have connection with me. And that's what Jesus is saying. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them in a fire, and they are burned. Now, I don't know if that speaks to you, what it speaks to me, but you know what that means to me is when people are not really serious and, and turn into living for God, then they're thrown away. That's what Jesus is saying. I didn't, I'm not saying this. And I can just imagine what he means by the fire and burned up. You can just believe what you want, but I believe it has a lot to do with maybe even hell. So you, we decide who we live for. If you abide in me and my words abide in you and ask whatever you wish, it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Is love demonstrated. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abided in his love. So, in a nutshell, we cannot do anything on our own without connection, connecting with God, without having an intimacy with Jesus. And that's how it works. Either we show God we're serious with him or not. We decide, right? Now, in the world, I, I just—it's not on the—it's not on, the, it's not on the, the scriptures there. Now, I don't know about you, but um, Jesus, uh, John, John—not uh, John the Revelator, John, Apostle John—he uh, he shared something. Uh, he, he took note of something about Jesus, and G well, Jesus, Jesus is speaking here. 
And uh, I'll just start with this. But there's something that we need to pay attention to. I'll just start with uh, John chapter 3, verse 17. For God did not send the Son in the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light, so that his deeds may be manifested, as if in, having been wrought in God. What do I get out of this scripture? Well, I believe that God, Jesus is speaking about, you have a choice in life. People have a choice in life. Either, you know, we know that you know, he's talking about unserved, un, un, unsaved people here, but also he's, I believe he's talking about people that are saved. And some are afraid of the light. What does that mean? They don't want their sins to be exposed. But if you want to be a true servant of God, you will want your sins to be exposed. You will come to the light. You will come to Jesus. And on one on one, you'll say to God, God, if there's something that breaks your heart that still is in me, I bring it to the light. Expose it so I can give it to you. And at the same time, when you do expose it, please help me live a better life for you. Because only Him can take it. Right? And so. I believe that we're, if we, we want to be shiners for God, if we want to serve Him with the utmost of the calling He has called us, we have to be not ashamed of coming to His life, His light. We have to, to be really serious in our walk and say, God, I want that. I, want, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to bring a blessing to your name. I, want, I don't want to dirty your name. If there's something in me, in my character, in the way I live, the way I, you know, whatever it is, and all of us are all different. There is, you know, I, I can guarantee you, you have at least one thing that still God is trying to deal with. Our part is to be honest with ourselves, honest with God, say, God, shine your light, and not be like what Jesus just said here in John chapter 3. Is to go forward and say, God, I want to live for you. See, it's while we're breathing that we have a chance to change the way we, we are. Uh, I won't go in details, but uh, I did that a few months ago. And God allowed a certain situation to happen in my life that he shone his light in the darkness of my heart and some stuff that I needed to change in the way I, I uh, tr treated uh, people. It's not something bad. It's just something that I, I, I am glad that he shone on it. And, and it will ever change me. I was honest with him. And he says, okay, son. It's like he said. Hey, I didn't hear him say that. But he's like, okay. Okay. I see you're sincere. Hopefully you're sincere too with him. And you say, God, I want to be perfect for you. Now we, not, we are not. And so the word of God says, be holy for I am holy. Holy means completely sold out for him. Right? We can only do so much with what he, what he exposes. Every one of us are in a walk where God is going to expose some stuff. If we're sincere in our walk with Jesus. right? If we're going to reach the lost at any cost, if we're going to reach people that are lost out there, then God expects his people to act according to him, his character. right? And so that's my heart. Hopefully it's your heart too. You know, Lord, shine your heart. Shine your light, I mean, on my heart. So in verse 5, it says the fruits spoken about here, I, I believe they're, they're, the, they're the fruits of the Spirit, which is the character traits of God, which bears in mind that the fruits of the Spirit are, are, are uh, we can accomplish them. We can have them. It's not something that's impossible. We can come to that place. Now we're going to be perfect just like Jesus, but let me tell you, God uh, wants more and more little Jesus on the earth, completely sold out for him, ready to die for him, right? Die to self. It's one of the, one of the, the, the hardest things to die 
to self. Paul preached that quite often. What is, what is to kill the flesh? To kill the flesh is to kill your, your will and emotions. It's to kill yourself. There are bad traits. It's uh, the way you act, the way you say things, the way you do things. It's to, it's to me, myself, and I type of thing. See, God's way of doing things is people first, him first, people first. The world's way is me, myself, and I. What can I get out of all this? And so that's what God wants to take out. He wants to take out these bad fruits and put his own fruits in there. And the more you seek him, the more he's going to do it. And it surely glorifies the Father when we act like him. It proves to the world that we represent God. See, the world needs to see out there people are truly Christians. In the world that we live in, there's never been a time where God wants his sons and daughters in Christ to shine in the darkness. I'm telling you, we're living in a way where we can be drawn we can be drawn in the world's way of doing things and act like the world, get angry like the world, seek revenge like the world, be jealous like the world. We can act like the world, but we don't want to do that, right? And so God expects his people to act completely different than the world system. That's where people are going to pay attention and say, I want, I want what they have. See, we're supposed to be a magnet, what a, not a, 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 a is it positive to positive? It pushes people, it pushes magnet. We want to be a, 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 a negative to pulls people into the kingdom. How do we do that? Well, the first, the best way is to be a good witness, right? I don't know about you, but I want to be a better witness. I don't think there's an end to that either. I think, I think uh, you you get so much, so in love with Jesus, so in love with Him that His presence and His love. It's, it, it comes out of you. It, it, it comes on you and it comes out of you. And I don't know about you, but that's what I want. You know, sometimes when I feel his love, I say, oh God, I, I just want that so much. And so we have to become like a Mary. We have to stop being like a Martha. Busy, 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 busy. Busy Martha. And so if you want to go to Luke chapter 10, verse 38. That's how it starts. This is how it starts. This is how it, it's done. See, we cannot expect to carry the character of God if we don't spend time with God at Jesus' feet. We have to learn to be at Jesus' feet every day. It's not a religious formula. It's just what it is. You spend quality time with God and His Word and especially in His presence. So we have to stop being like a Martha in her business and become more like her sister, Mary, a lover of Jesus by spending time with Jesus. So in Luke chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Now as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparation, and she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Now pay attention to what Jesus says. Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Mart uh, Mary had chosen to sit at Jesus' feet. No, no, no matter how long it would take, she decided to listen and to hug him and to kiss his feet and whatever else she did. But she was more, she was more interested in the God things as worldly things. Martha was busy, busy. She was worried about things happening and stressed out to the core and all that. But if we want to live right for God at this hour, we must spend more time at Jesus' feet. We must spend quality time waiting on God, reading His Word, but especially sitting on His feet. Because the thing is, 
there's a transfer that happens in our spirit man when we spend time with God. I believe that, you know, I shared a few weeks ago on the, the importance of praying in tongues and praying in tongues and it, it downloads things. Uh, it downloads uh, uh, revelation and uh, all kinds of stuff it does. But also when you spend quality time with the Lord, and even though you think it's nothing's happening, you just sit there and you wait on Him and you show God, you show the Lord you're serious about your walk. Suddenly there's a download from heaven. Suddenly you feel His love for you. It could be anything, but out of all that, there's a transfer that happens. And you change image. Your image goes from glory to glory. You, you become more like Him. Why? Because you learn to spend time with Him. It's not foolishness to do that. There is a change that does happen just like you know, Jesus, here John uh, in Luke, in Luke uh, he gives us an example of what happened. It's you, you listen to the Lord. You listen to him. You wait upon him. Even though at times it could be like, feel like you're wasting your time, nothing is wasted. Because you're, you're showing God that you're serious with your walk and you want to hear from heaven. And believe me, there's a transfer that happens. Your character will change. Staying, something will change in you. And in reading his word, something will transfer. You will become more like him. So you do first things first, and the worries of the world will fade away. Everything else, all your worries, when you spend time, will call the time with Jesus, you everything else will fade away. Just like Helen was sharing earlier. You know, when we worship, when you worship the Lord, things all seems that everything, all that, that junk the world puts on you is all gone. Why? Because God trans transferred his presence and his love for you. So it's only when you spend quality time with Jesus and in his word will there become a transfer of his love into your spirit, man. And then into your heart, which will then cause you to shine more and more for him and like him. So what does it entail? Well, it entails commitment on our part. And it's called dying to self and living for God, just like I showed you earlier. It's a commitment, Lord. Uh, you, you're honest with God. You say, God, I want to serve you with the utmost of your calling for my life. And if you're sincere... But your walk with God, I'm telling you, he's going to do it. And he's going to reveal some stuff. He will expose things. And all you have to do, all we have to do, all I have to do is that admit it, and then he will change you. Right? I don't know about you, but that's what I want. Because I wanted the world out there to see a difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. Because right now there's many, uh, there's many that are not showing what is a true Christian. And it breaks my heart and it breaks the Father's heart, right? Because this is not what being a Christian is all about. Having a revengeful heart, being, being, uh, being, uh, being hurtful, uh, being jealous, uh, fits of anger, fits of rage, whatever. Like, It does not display God at all. That's not how God wants us to respond to stuff. Every one of us will be held accountable with our walk with God. So it demands commitment on our part, and it's called dying to self. When my question to you is, and to whoever's watching, when will all God's children ever realize that, that that's what the real Christian life is all about? It's not about getting toys and money and getting rich, you know, with all you know, kinds of gospel message out there, but it's not, it's not, it's not, it's about total surrender to Jesus. Total, you own, he owns you. His blood was shed for you, for shed for me. It's his blood. He purchased us with his blood. We are no longer our own. He, we belong to him. We're his property. Paul said it this way, and I love, what, I love this part of Scripture. I love it. I read it quite often. He says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. What does that mean? That means his very life source, his very character lives in me. 
And the life which I now live in the flesh, that means in the physical, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself up for me. Oh, Dan, you don't have the Passion Translation, but a Passion Translation says this verse a little bit differently. Galatians 2.20, it says, My whole identity has been co has been co-crucified with Messiah and no longer lives for the nails of his cross crucified me with him and now the essence of this new life is no longer mine for the anointed one lives his life through me we live in union as one my new life is empowered by the faith of the son of god who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine wow i want that paul live his life totally yielded to Christ his, his, his emotions everything he gave to him and for me to live as Christ meaning I want to live like Christ I want to do things like Christ did and I want to love people like he loved people I want to do miracles like he did miracles I want to have, be merciful like he was merciful I want to be full of joy like he was full of joy I want to be exactly who a representative of him on earth I am crucified with him I I died to self I want to live for him I want to be a totally surrendered to him I believe that's the ultimate goal of Christianity is to to become more like him and we won't be like Jesus we won't be Jesus but we can sure has because only the Holy Spirit can bring us to that place see everything comes from him it's only God that empowers us. We can't follow the Ten Commandments without His help. It's impossible. You know, that's why Jesus shed His blood on the cross. He wanted to put His Spirit back in man so that we could follow the nature of God instead of the nature of man, the nature of the enemy. Right? It's when we say, God, do whatever to bring me to that place. Hey, Amen? So, Father God has a goal, and that goal is to have a family who will truly love each other and shine the glory of his love all around them. Paul the Apostle said it this way. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. That's exactly what Paul was saying. You can get so close to God that His glory is going to touch you and transform you, and you're going to become, you're going to, you're going to grow from glory to glory to glory to glory. The meaning you're going to shine so much. Just like, you know, when, when they went into the, uh, the mountain of transfiguration, right? I've seen, I, I've seen a few, I've seen a few Christians in my days. I know, I, they, they've been there. They've been to that place where they're, they're completely sold out for God. They, they, they illuminate, you look at them and they, their eyes, their nature, their character, what comes out of their mouth is pure ecstasy, pure love from God. Glory upon them. And I believe that we can attend that. We can come to a place in our walk with God so close to Him, so filtered. Because Paul, this is what Paul says we can attain. He wouldn't have put it there in ink if we would not be able to attain that. And that's God's greatest goal is that we grow from glory to glory, meaning His character, His divine, His presence. People, we go in a room like uh, what's her name? There, uh, that great evangelist, there, uh, Catherine Coleman. She would walk in the stage, and it's the Holy Spirit that does that. The, the glory of God would come and would touch people, and people would be healed. How did that happen? While well, she came close to God, that we can do that too. We can get so close to God that all people see is God in us. They're drawn to that. I want what you have. It's not to, to be a proudful. It's not. It's to bring glory to God. It's to, to touch human lives for Him. 
It's when you go in a restaurant and somebody needs prayer. He sends the presence of God and the love of God and, and suddenly they're drawn to what you have and maybe you start ministering to them and God through you is doing, he does something and he either a healing miracle or a word of encouragement, but you would change a life. You change a life for him. You represent him. You speak on his behalf. You let his, his presence infiltrate the realms of the natural realm from the spirit realm. Somehow, I don't know how that works. But I know it does work. People, people can sense the glory of God. I don't know if you want what I want, but that's what I want. That's what is God expect. God is expecting the end time church to become just like that. He expects his people to become like that. You might say, well, pastor, you know, you're asking for lots. No, it's attainable because God says it, it's attainable. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of people that are hurting out there. And you need to know that there's a God on his throne. And he lives through his people. And he can touch the people that are lost. People are looking for answers. We are a type of believer. We believe in a fivefold ministry gifting. We believe in the signs and wonders. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit of God. We believe in healing. We believe in all that. But I also believe that we can experience. We can actually display the power and presence of God just by being sitting somewhere and people are drawn by us and not uh, expelled by us, by the way we talk and by the way we act. They are drawn to us. They will see the, the, the glory of God. They will see something is different. They wouldn't, even to the place, probably they will smell the presence of God. Amen. We are, more, we are carriers of the kingdom of God. Did you know that? Carriers. That's what God, Jesus came to bring a kingdom. What does that entail? He says the kingdom of God is within you. That means the kingdom of God is in us, but also can touch human life. Jesus says, go and preach the kingdom. He told that to his disciples. Jesus has not, uh, had not even been crucified yet. That's beyond my notes. What kind of kingdom did he go and share? They, they shared the gospel. They, they shared the power of God, the love of God, they cast out demons, they raised the dead of all there. You know, they were supposed to raise the dead, but 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 they healed the sick. Meaning be there for people, for their hurting, be there and be my voice, be my be my character, be my uh, let my power pass through you. I give you the keys of the kingdom. So we are kingdom carriers, we are a people of God. We are supposed to display God. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord. So that means the more you, you spend time with him, the more his glory is going to come on you. That's what it's saying here. Are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as the Lord, the Spirit. He's talking about spiritual experience here. That's what Paul is talking now the Lord is the Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord, is, there is liberty. That means the Holy Spirit brings all that to, to, to play. And Daniel, Daniel, in the Old Testament, in chapter 12, verse 3, he shared something. He, he, saw, he saw the future. He saw the end times. He saw the Antichrist. He saw the, the, the last kingdom on the earth. He was so afraid of what's going to happen. He saw this Babylonian demonic infiltrating type of uh, 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 um, kingdom uh, overtake all the world. This Antichrist, we're, we're, we're seeing it now. We're seeing all these things that Daniel saw. He saw, and he, he, he was so, he was shaking. The Bible says he was shaking. He was fearful of what was happening. But yet he saw this. He saw this. In, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, it says, Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. He saw the kingdom people that we are part of it. He, he saw us. He saw the real believers. He saw the shiners. He saw the people of God ready to do great exploit for him. Completely sold out for Jesus. Completely in love with Jesus. Completely ready to do whatever it takes. 
completely dying to self and living for God. And he saw that. He saw the shiners. He saw those people. We are that generation. We, all over the world right now, that generation is alive. And God is raising up a people that are sold out for him. And the enemy cannot shut us down. Because if you're in love with Jesus, if you really truly love Jesus, you will be a surrendered vessel and he will be able to use you and you will shine his kingdom and you will shine his character and you will draw people to him by what you say, by what you do. That's what Daniel saw. Daniel saw. Again, I read it again. Those who, will, who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. That means people will take notice. The lost will take notice. Do you want that? I want that. So this is the ultimate goal of Christianity, to have Christ-like people roaming the earth. Manifesting his character, his presence, and his power. And they will be ever increasing from glory to glory. Now, I, I leave you with this. <laughs> you know, there's a reason why I call it shiners. You ever went fishing? Louis, you went, you go fishing, right? You know, there's, I, I <laughs> I've never done on that until the Holy Spirit revealed that. God is looking, you know, when you go fishing, you go fishing for pickerel or, or even pike, you can buy shiners. What does shiners do? They attract people, right? So you buy shiners, you can buy a metal ones there, and they, they're, they, they, they are like the sun rays, they, they touch, they, they shine on it, and the fish, you see that big fish, and you go, ah, shoo, and they grab that, right? And, and the same goes with, you know, little fish we call shiners, right? But what attracts them is that they shine, right? So in the same way as you're going fishing, you know, we're fishing for men, right? Not to bring them into a denomination or not to bring them. We're fishing them into the kingdom. And so God wants us to remind ourselves that we are shiners, just like those little fish there. And, uh, you know, you... Whew, you, you just, you roll them in. You roll them in. How do you roll them in? You roll them in by how you act in public. You roll them in by the presence of God. And that's what he expects us to do. So the Lord expects his followers to attract people to themselves, which will then be lured to serve God. Are you ready to do that? I don't know about you. I'll finish this. This is just uh, the beginning, the introduction of my message this morning. But uh, but God is looking for shiners, seriously. You know, let's be honest with God. I don't know about you, but we're living in the last of the very last days. We, we are. Now, I don't know when Jesus is coming back, but let me tell you, it could be very soon. As a matter of fact, it could be days. It could be any time. Right now, you know, in Israel, I shared with you a few weeks ago, media, the main media won't cover what's happening in the Middle East, but the Middle East is the time block for God. For the last days. And right now we're very close to the Ezekiel war. And we're very close to Damascus, the city that's supposed to be destroyed. That's supposed to be completely, we're very close to that. I'm not going to go in details, but all the key players, the armies and the countries, Turkey and, and all these other countries, uh, you know, all these under, they're all in line where we can read in Ezekiel 38, 39, that God will draw people. And there's going to be, God's going to intervene. It's going to be supernatural war. We're very close to that. I believe, I believe it's because of this war, there's going to be a seven-year treaty, peace treaty. I'm not going to go in details. But I believe that we're very close to that and also the rapture of the church. We're so close. It's no time to play games with God. I'm speaking to you on, on YouTube too there. It's no time to play with, with your walk with God. Get serious with God. Allow God to be God within you. Allow God to transform you from glory to glory. We need to get serious with him. We need to 
When he comes in, he can come in the night. He'll come like a thief in the night. And uh, we need to be ready. He expects his people to be ready. He expects his people to, 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 to live for him, completely sold out. Not to live for the things of the world, what we can, I can get out of the world. But how, low, how can you use me? That's the way we should live right now. What, what can I do for the kingdom right now? How can I reach the loss at any cost right now? I believe I'm trying to do my part, but you also have a part. You have a part. We all have a part. It starts by dying to self, living for God, to get serious with God. So let's just bow our head. And Father, I just pray for the people watching on, on, uh, on YouTube, listening on podcasts, and also those here in attendance. Father, I, we just realize that, uh, uh, Lord, there's, there's, when we receive you as the Lord, it entails everything. That means you become Lord of our life, completely Lord of our life. That means that our emotions, everything belongs to you, everything, your character, we want your character. We want you. We want our flesh to die and live for God. I just pray for all the people here, the people watching. I pray, Lord God, that we will be better servants for the Most High God. I pray, Lord God, for the kingdom of God to come in our midst, for you to change us inside us as we share our thoughts. Lord, I pray for the people watching and the people here that they will be honest with you even home, at home. And they will be honest. Say, God... Expose the things that are still make you sad. Make me uh, expose every little darkness in me. It could be a little thing, but Lord, if it's still there, I don't want it. And so, Lord, expose it so that I can be a better person for Christ and live for you, Lord God. And uh, for those who have never received Jesus as Lord, uh, you know, to be able to be a, come a, a true Christian, you need to be born again. Very simple. Jesus shed his blood on the cross for you. And all he wants you is to believe that he died for your sins. And you can't make it on your own. And you need to receive him as Lord. And when you do that, in your own room, wherever you're at, you receive Jesus as Lord, and you're sincere with it, then we call it being born again. Not a church, not a denomination. It's the experience of being a true, genuine Christian. I pray that you do that. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the people here. And may you have an awesome day and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.